In this video, I'm going to show you how to change your automatic transmission fluid in your Mazda 3 or Axela and Mazda 2. This is only a drain and refill, no changing of filters. Before you start doing this job, it is always a good idea to check and measure the fluid level first because that will be your basis or, in other words, you will know how much fluid you should put back into your transmission. Take note for these important reminders. The blue temperature icon means that the engine is still cold. Waiting for 5 minutes is the period where the engine will reach the desired temperature for checking the transmission fluid level. Then, you can now check the dipstick for fluid level. The dipstick is located at the bottom of the air filter box. It is held down by a 10mm screw. Be sure to remove it so you can pull it away. Reach and pull the dipstick. There you can see the markings and fluid. You can also notice that there is a fluid on the full mark, which is only splashed by the flow of fluid inside. And there it is. The fluid is in the middle. Before we proceed, here is a picture of the dipstick. There you can see the required temperature of the fluid for checking, 50 degrees or 122 Fahrenheit. You can use an OBD2 scanner and check for the TFT or transmission fluid temperature. If you don't have an OBD2 scanner or your scanner does not have that feature, you can just simply let your car warm up just like how I did in the beginning of the video. This is the back of the dipstick. And this is the handle. FZ is the type of fluid that is currently used in this Mazda. This is how the fluid level looks like when you measure it with a cold engine. You can see that the fluid is all the way to the top of the parenthesis. Basically, when you start the engine and let it heat up, the transmission fluid will be recirculated within the system, which is the reason why it decreases its level on the dipstick. That is the time for you to check the fluid level, not on the cold engine. With a cold engine that is turned off, all of the fluid stays intact in the transmission oil pan, causing it to have a high reading of fluid level. Brace the vehicle by using your hydraulic jack. I use a rubber padding in between the pinch weld and jack to prevent any damages. Put an axle stance to make it safe and secured. This is how I mount my axle stand. I place it behind the pinch weld, which is where the jacking points are located. I do this on all cars to prevent the pinch weld from bending and any other damages. Next is to remove all of the fasteners and plastic clips that holds the lower engine cover. You need a flathead screwdriver and a 10mm socket wrench for this step. Once removed, this is how the lower engine cover looks like. There are 6 10mm bolts and 6 plastic fasteners. Use an 8mm allen wrench for loosening the drain bolt. Grab a close wrench to use it as an extension for extra leverage. Slide a drain pan underneath. Wipe and clean the oil pan first before loosening the bolt. The drain bolt is an allen bolt with a washer gasket.
While draining, remove the air intake box assembly. These are 10mm bolts. You can use a socket or a screwdriver. Push aside the metal clips on both sides. Remove the air filter. There are three rubber grill mats that holds the intake assembly. Just pull the whole assembly gently. And there you can see the dipstick. Clean the surroundings of the dipstick first. Use a 10mm to loosen the bolt of the dipstick. After removing it, pull the dipstick. Now make sure to clean the surface carefully. Don't let the dirt get into the transmission. I will now replace the washer gasket on this drain bolt. Wipe off any dirt. So here is the old washer gasket and the new washer gasket. Put in the new ones. Carefully pull the drain pan. This is the old transmission fluid. Clean the oil pan again before you reinstall the drain bolt. Tighten the drain bolt. Use an extension for extra leverage. After that, reinstall the underneath cover or the splash shield and lower the vehicle. Here I have four bottles of transmission fluid and a funnel with a tube. These are specifically for sky active transmission. I decided to measure the old fluid using an empty container with a measurement. Now that it exceeded the markings, I will transfer some fluid into another bottle. So here is the measurement. By looking at it, it is 4 liters, but to be exact, probably 4.1 liters. For that, I will just pour all of the 4 liters of transmission fluid. Then after filling it with new oil, pull the tube and set it aside. Clean the dipstick before you return it. I will not return the 10mm bolt since I will measure the level later. I try to check the level even though the engine is turned off. It's kinda hard to see on the camera. The level is on where I point it. The old fluid is on this spot and the new one 
is right here. Don't worry about it because the new fluid will decrease as soon as it fills up the different spaces inside the transmission. Now that I'm finished reinstalling the other parts, I can now start the engine, let it warm up, and check the fluid level. This is the 10mm bolt for the dipstick. After starting the engine, wait for the idle to subside. Then, switch to all gear positions to let the fluid flow. Wait for a couple of seconds before you switch to a different gear position. When the engine is warm, you can now check the fluid level. Be careful when pulling the dipstick. Coolant hose and other metal parts are hot. This is usually done on a lifter where you can reach the dipstick underneath the vehicle. After pulling the dipstick, wipe it off, then reinsert it, and pull it again. Now, reading the fluid level can be a bit tricky. Ideally, the fluid should take place between those two lines. It is in the middle. As I inspected, the fluid mark above the middle box is a bit hollow, which means that it is only splashed by the fluid inside. On the middle box, there is a concentrated mark of fluid, which is good, and to conclude that, the 4 liters of transmission fluid is enough for a drain and refill job. If you ever fill it with too much transmission fluid, then there is a way to decrease it. All you need is a syringe and a hose. Just put the hose into the filler hole and pull the syringe to remove some fluid. And that's how you decrease the fluid if ever that you have put too much of it. The fluid changed its color after a few days of usage. I hope you find this video helpful. I will upload soon a complete transmission fluid job, which includes the replacement of the filter. Thank you very much for watching and God bless.